Hello and welcome to the last part of today's lecture. Uh, in this last part, I just want to talk briefly about some of the algebraic products uh, uh, properties of the product a times x. So the first thing I want to do is just kind of mention a little bit more about you know how does one go about computing a times x. So for example, I have the matrix one, two, three, four, five, six, and I want to multiply it by the vector x1, x2. Now you'll notice that if you follow the definition the formal definition, you should have x1 times the first column, 1, 3, 5, and plus x2 times the second column, 2, 4, 6. And then you're supposed to add all of these guys up. So in the first spot, we get 1 times x1 plus 2 times x2. In the second spot, we get 3 times x1 plus 4 times x2. And in the last spot, we get 5 times x1 plus 6 times x2. Okay. Now, if you step back here and kind of look at what you get, let's look at the third entry here. Notice the, the third entry comes from the third third row. Right? We have a 5 and a 6, and that's coming from the 5 and the 6. So one way to think about what you're doing is you're taking this column x1 and x2, and you're tilting it on its side. So x5 gets paired with the x1, and 6 gets paired with the x2. And so you're taking 5 times x1 plus 6 times x2. And it's actually what's happening through all the other spots, too. You're taking 3 times x1 plus 4 times x2. That goes in that spot. So that's a handy little observation when you're doing these calculations. So, for example, if I wanted to compute what this is, I could go, well, this should be 1 times minus 1 plus 2 times 2. Then I have 3 times minus 1 plus 4 times 2. Then I have 5 times minus 1 plus 6 times 2. Now, as you get better at this, you can just do these calculations in your head. And that's normally what I do. I would go, oh, 1 times minus 1 is negative 1, plus 2 times 2 is 4, so that should be 3, and so on. So this should be a 3, and this should here be a 7. Okay, so this is another way of viewing about how, uh, a viewpoint about what you're doing when you're computing a matrix times a vector. On the next page here, I have kind of some important properties of multiplying a vector by a matrix. And I have two of them here. Now, the first one is telling me that, suppose I have two vectors. When I add two vectors, I get another vector. So if I take A and after, so if I take my vectors U and V, first add them and multiply them by my matrix A, it's the same thing as first multiplying A times U and A times V to get two vectors and adding them together. And then the B is saying that whether I do a scalar multiple, whether I scale my vector at the beginning and then multiplying in the A, it's the same thing as first multiplying a by my matrix, uh, my matrix A by my vector U, and then scaling by the vector C. So I'm going to give a partial proof for this. And then by partial here, I mean that I'm just going to do a special case where n is equal to 2. And it just kind of makes the notation a little bit easier uh, to work with. And the reason that I can do that, when, sorry, when I do this, I then can say something about my vector u. It will only have two, it will be a vector containing two elements. And v will be a vector containing two elements as well, v1 and v2, because my n is now 2. And the other thing in my special case is I my vec matrix A has to have two columns. Yeah. Okay. Now, so I'm just looking at the special case where my matrix A has two columns. Uh, you Hopefully you can see as I'm doing the proof what would happen if I had more than two columns. So let, let's look at A, and let me show you how, how the proof works. Okay. So just as a general comment, when you're doing statements of this form, something the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. What you're trying to do is you're trying to justify why there's an equal sign in between. So you're starting with one side, either left or right-hand side, you can either you can choose, and you're expanding that out, doing a series of 
deductions to explain why the next equal you have the next equal sign and so on until you get to the to the right hand side. So let me be a little bit more clear here. So I'm starting with the right hand side of a uh, times the vector u plus v. So well, we actually know what u and v are in this case, and this is u1 u2 plus v1 v2. Now I know how to add two vectors together. So the stuff inside of the quantity just reduces to u1 plus v1, u2 plus v, oh, I think that a little bit near, u1 plus v, oh, u2 plus v2. Okay. Now remember my matrix A has two columns. So this is equal to u1 plus v1 times the first column plus u2 plus v2 times the second column. And now let's expand out and then recollect, right? So if I expand this out, I get u1 times the first column plus v1 times the first column plus u2 times the second column plus v2 times the second column. Because here I'm just using the properties of vector addition and scalar multiplication. Move up my page a little bit so I have a bit more room. So now I'm going to recollect terms. Here I have u1, a1, but I'm gonna collect them differently. I'm gonna put all the u's together and I'm gonna put all the v's together. And then I sit back and stare at it and I go, oh, I know this looks like a linear combination of A1 and A2. And linear combinations of A1 and A2, you can think of them as uh, a product of a matrix times a vector. And in fact, this is the same thing as A times the vector U1, U2. And over here, this is the same thing as the matrix A times the vector V1, V2. And we can just then rewrite this as AU plus AV. Okay, so this is a nice illustration of how uh, a very simple proof in linear algebra would work when you're trying to show uh, an inequality. You you start with one side and you provide your justification using some of the properties of either uh, stuff that you know. So in this case, it's stuff about uh, vector addition or scalar multiplication. Now I'm doing this case n equals two. You can think about how this would change if you had, instead of two entries, if you had uh, n entries. Oh, and we'll let that disappear. You don't need to see that tie has done something into my Dropbox. Okay, and let's quickly do uh, the part B as well, which is saying that A times Cu is equal to a, and now I'm just gonna write out what this vector means, right? It's c times the first coordinate and c times the second coordinate. I expand this out. All right, now both of these terms contain a c, so I can factor it out. And but everything inside of the square parentheses is really just a the vector uh, sorry a times the vector u. Okay, and remember we put a little box at the end to mean that we're at the end of the proof. So we'll see this theorem pop up again in a couple uh, in a couple lectures. But it's a nice property to know about uh, matrix multiplication by a vector. So there is a bunch of things that we learned today. One of the things that you should take away from today's uh, lecture is a new viewpoint on system to linear equations. So in particular, you now can write a system of linear equations as a matrix equations. You're taking a matrix times a vector equaling to another vector. Other things that we, we learned about today is when Ax equals B, as a solution for all vectors b. So that's going to, uh, that will be an important theorem that we're using a number of times in the course. And we talked a little bit about properties of ax. 
properties of the uh, uh, matrix multiplication by a vector. So that's where we are at the end of today's lecture. Make sure you go and take a look at section 1.4. Some of this material is there. And keep up on the suggested problems that are listed. Uh, Again, if you, or if you have any problems or questions, feel free to email your instructor. We look forward uh, and we look forward from hearing here. Okay, see you on the next lecture.